and welcome to the Oddity Archive, the show that is feeling a little empty inside right now. So, we've come down to the final regular Archive episode to be shot at the original Archive HQ. Talk about bittersweet. But uh, we still have a show to do, so let's get on with it. Of course, last time we started digging through my big backlog of Coloradan ephemera, and last time we took a look at all the warm, fuzzy, friendly, nostalgic stuff, and so and today the pendulum swings in the other direction, and uh, it's going to be a deep hurting sort of day. Because we're fathers of adolescent daughters. So let's kick things off with today's only album, and this is actually the least worst thing I'm covering today, by far. Now, back in my own music days, and even now, I've never honestly cared that much for the overall Colorado music scene. It's just always been kind of dull and very hyper-conformist. Uh, even the so-called avant-garde artists seem to bend over backwards and conform to, like, all the other avant-garde artists. And, uh, I mean, I've only ever covered one local self-released album prior to this whole local flavor concept, and that was that uh, Zerati tape on the Random Cassettes episode. But uh, I rounded up all those albums and EPs and singles, uh, specifically self-released ones that I've gathered over the years, and I listened to them, getting ready to make this, and only two items stood out at all. The first one was a punk record, which uh, kind of just stuck out for being a punk record. There just isn't much of a punk scene here. And uh, that record had more expletives than non-expletives in the lyrics. And to make matters worse, musically and vocally, it was just standard issue punk. It was totally indistinct. But the other item that stood out is the one album that I'm going to cover. So what I've got here is the apparent sole release of a new wave uh, group, which I think is mostly the work of one person, called Hydride, and the album is called Free Radicals. How much you want to bet some science majors were involved with this one? Now, I wish I could give you some sort of story about these guys, but uh, or this guy, I just cannot find a thing. I went digging around online, and I can find absolutely nothing. In fact, my copy of this tape seems to be the only proof of their existence. But uh, what led me to pick this thing up initially were two of the song titles, Aryan Airhead and That's Gross. And as it turned out, the album is a little clunky, a little out of tune at times, but it's endearing. It's actually pretty charming. drum set there and give you a beat about two four and 170. Huh. I just got an idea. What are you gonna do? I'll show ya. Hmm. I was over at a party. This girl had a baby. She said, can you hold her? I said, sure, maybe. She started in the slobber, so then I had to wipe her. But then later on, I had to change the diaper. That's gross. That's gross. It was gross. I took a class last summer. Advanced life saving. Was walking on a beach when I saw a swimmer waving. Mouth resuscitation can really be That's gross. That's gross. You'll get more when you start giving. But it's gross. It's gross. 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 G
Lost car, mech, son of a gun. could have seen how a sick, demented dream would make you want to scream, She's an airhead! All right, let's get on with the video stuff. Now, over the last couple of months, I have sat and watched, I think, 15, at some point publicly released, Colorado-made videotapes. And unlike all the albums, it was a lot harder to whittle down the videos to what I wanted to share. Uh, now, last time we tackled that Three Amigos Touchdown Banditos tape, and while that was cheesy and a little awkward, at least it was fun, and it didn't take itself seriously. I wish I could say the same for the three videos I've got for you today. So the first two are actually movies. I don't normally do movie reviews, but uh, here we go. And one is an indie film, which was actually shot on video, and the other is of a stage play, but it's professionally shot and everything. But let's start with the indie flick. You're familiar with a little cult film called The Room, right? You are lying, I never hit you. You gotta tear me apart, Lisa! This movie is called Mahogany Knots. And uh, this predates The Room by about three years. And uh, it kind of feels like a dry run for it. Although there's no Tommy Wiseau-like figure here to make it a little more interesting. Uh, although it is the work of an auteur. But anyway, like The Room, it's a very overwrought drama. The characters are 100% unsympathetic. The dialogue is very clunky and unnatural. And when you think about it, this lot of people would never peacefully coexist in the real world. Uh, certainly not have any kind of romantic relationships or anything. But unlike The Room, which actually had some halfway decent camera work and something resembling performances, the camera work here is incredibly stagey and static, and the acting is the very definition of wooden. And uh, the music, I gotta mention the music, there seems to only be one piece of music for the entire movie, and it's this clunky, dreary, depressing thing played on an old upright piano. And uh, yeah. this thing only runs 41 minutes, but it feels like a lot more. 
Now, before I start with my little montage, I should point out that the auteur of this thing, the director slash writer slash producer slash star, has posted this whole movie for free viewing to Vimeo, as of this episode at least. So if you're so inclined, go check it out. But uh, just know that I assume no liability for any broken computers, broken furniture, or broken hearts. kids are gone. Because he's my husband. And I'm your sister. Listen, listen, are you going to do the AIDS walk this year? Uh-uh. Too busy with the biodiversity conference. Great. Then you can sponsor me. morning. <laughs> Don't you know hitchhiking's dangerous? <laughs> like anyone's gonna try something in the middle of rush hour traffic. Yeah, well, what if you had a gun? Happen there. There's a long gun. I think I can handle it. Pick up that car thing? Of course. Anything new at the office? Same old stupidity. We did get a new temp, an artist. Oh? Emotionally unstable. Oh, we might get Al Gore for the conference. Swim with the dolphins. Don't tempt me. You know I would. You're sweet, Jim. But I'm a married woman, a grandmother. You wouldn't want to see me in a bathing suit. Well, yeah, I would. Uh, she's an eco-freak. Save the whales, save the rainforest, save every damn thing. Oh, and you don't approve? <laughs> sure I do. It's criminal the way species are going extinct. I just wish she'd try saving our marriage for a change. Why bother? What? Why should she want to? You've got to be the most rigid asshole I have ever met in my whole life. No offense, but living with you must be pure hell. No offense? Why didn't you tell me about her? Because it's not important. I don't tell you every little thing I do, every phone call, every piece of mail. I get the point. Dinner will be delayed. I'm sorry about last night. It's not your fault. It, I was For just... For sake, don't defend yourself. I know I'm old and fat. It's not that. And you hurt her feelings? Why do you assume I was the one who hurt her feelings? Because you're an insensitive clod. No offense, but... <laughs> no offense. <laughs> she said she'd pose for me now since I might start drawing again. And I sort of turned her down. You asshole! Hey, watch it! God, that, that just, you must have made her feel like shit. That is such an insult. She overreacted, just like you. And save your intimidation for somebody else, bastard. It's hard to get back to basics, to simple pleasures and desires and wanting someone. Some knots are so tight, it's like these knots in the wood. They're stuck in them, can't escape. Escape? You mean like you want a divorce? Hell no. I mean, I guess part of me does. She means so much to me. Oh, yeah, like a live-in maid. Look, pal, it's over. She's not going to take your abuse any longer. Oh, talk to her lawyer. Oh, Lord, that felt good.
Attention, beer drinkers. If you're buying beer by the can, stop. You're throwing your money away. You should have a Beer Master Home Draft Beer Bar. Here's why. A can of beer costs around 75 cents. A glass of draft from your Beer Master costs only 25 cents. You'll save over 70%. If you're buying a couple of cases of beer a week, you could save over $1,000 a year. How would you like to have a free home demonstration? You can if you call 784-5500. That's 784-5500. Call now. This other, if you will, movie also suffers from some pretty horrendous writing. But unlike Mahogany Knots, it's not jerky, unnatural dialogue that sinks it, but a bunch of sickly sweet, ultra-contrived scenarios that kills this one. But anyway, this is called Father's Anonymous, and it actually comes from right here in beautiful downtown Awara. And uh, as I've already mentioned, this was a professionally shot play, so not a proper movie. But uh, it was shot in front of an audience of, at best, 20 people. Now, I think the basic premise of this thing is just fine. You've got two actors who play, by turns, a couple of fathers or some sort of father and son combination. And it's a bunch of vignettes about the trials of parenthood. But again, the sickly sweet, ultra-contrived scenarios totally kill this one, and all the completely pointless musical numbers do not help. But unlike Mahogany Knots, the camera work and the music, while mediocre, completely blow that thing away. And the acting, and uh, operative word, acting, it's the best that you could hope for given the material. It's still a pretty tough slog, though. Nobody listens to fathers anymore Kids promise that they'll sit and chat and then they're out the door Or when you call they just recall a meeting that they have Oh, nobody listens to dad We're sorry, but that number is busy. Try again later. Five, five, five dads. Hi, um, we got a problem here, a major problem, <laughs> but I don't want to overreact. My wife says I've been overreacting to this whole pregnancy thing. Well, what's the problem this time? My wife's in labor. Well, uh, maybe this is bad advice, but shouldn't you take her to the hospital? Do you think so? I don't want to overreact. I think you're safe on this one. That's standard procedure, take her to the hospital. Okay, well, I believe you. <laughs> Say, do I have time to clean out my paintbrushes first? This past week, you know, she wanted to go to this party. You know, I didn't think she should go, you know, I mean, she didn't know the people very well, you know, she'd be out late at night. I just didn't think she should go. Why won't you let me go? It's because I love you. Don't you understand? I want you to be safe. I love you. And I'm screaming, you know, and the veins are bulging out of my forehead and out of my neck and everything. And then all of a sudden she just gets this, this silly little look on her face and she says, Thank you, Daddy. Mom says that I should remind you about your biblical and spiritual responsibilities as head of this household to care for your offspring. She does, does she? Hmm. Now, why is your spring off? Well, my dad and I didn't get along very well as, when I was growing up. You, you know, um, uh, he just wasn't around much. Not as a father, you know. I, uh, see, uh, I, I used to wish that he'd want to do things with me, you know? I know. It's just a, just an empty shell. Well, just, just like the body in the coffin was yesterday, you know? I mean, just like we all are. Just empty shells filled with memory and spirit. And God got the spirit, I got the memory. Memory, record, retrieval. What in the world's retrieval mean? I'll just push this button here. Work, you silly outfit. I, oh, I tell you, I hate these things. 
I don't know why I even bother with them. Now, come on, forget about that VCR thingy, and let's just sit down, have us a cup of hot tea. No, and no, no. I just want you to be happy and comfortable I'm here, I'm happy okay? when I have time to spend with my family. Yeah. Well, you know how it is. Here, Nick. Uh, I don't have time right now, so why don't you take the car and go see what your buddies are doing? Hey, Nick, your mom and I are going out to dinner. Here's a couple bucks. Why don't you go see a movie? You gave me everything, Dad. Everything I could ever want, except maybe just a little bit of you, huh? So why don't you just shut up and let me get this thing finished. And your confidence will take their breath away. <laughs> your little star. Don't let your moment pass. You can make them smile. Take an extra bow. Before the final curtain closes They'll be calling out your name And throwing you roses So a little time We're fathers of adolescent Silly channel changer right there. <laughs> I, I really do appreciate everything you've done. Um, I'm sure we'd be back this summer. <laughs> you know, I, uh, you got a great lake for fishing here, and and I think Tom would enjoy working out in the backyard too. He's he's pretty good with his hands. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's the last super summer sale of the century at Deal and Dyke Centennial Chrysler Plymouth Jeep. Look for super savings on hundreds of new Chrysler's, Plymouth Jeeps, even our gold seal warranty used cars, all clearly tagged with super year-end prices. Plus super rebates are 60,000 miles plus from United, so you can fly with me. Even $199 a month or absolutely nothing down. For the best deals this side of Krypton, see Centennial Chrysler Plymouth Jeep. It's our last super summer sale of the century, and nobody beats a super Deal and Dyke deal, nobody. And so we come down to the final video. And this video comes to us from the small mountain town of Dillon, population 900 and something. But way back when, this was a much bigger town. But back in the late 50s, early 60s, some folks from Denver Water went up there and they said, hey, we want to build a dam here and this is gonna flood your town out of existence, and you better get out. And that's exactly what happened. If you go up there today and look down into the water, you can still see the remains of those old buildings. But uh, some people were understandably upset about this, and they wound up having to leave anyway, but the best they could do was they found this little area of higher ground about a mile away. They went up there and they restarted the town. And a lot of the people that went up there at the time have since moved on or died off. And in the 80s and 90s, it became kind of this little hippie enclave. And uh, I think that perfectly explains this video. Only a bunch of hermetic mountain hippies could ever come up with something like this. So anyway, the tape in question is Feeling Wonderful with Silly Size, Funzical Fitness, trademark, for children ages two and three quarters to seven and five six, starring delightful dorkiest teeterbomb, smiley up cheeks, and Otto B. Jolly. I did not make up a word of that.
Now, uh, this doesn't involve any uh, shady children's beauty pageants or anything like that that I'm aware of, but it's right up there alongside the happy hamster on the implied pedophilia chart. And actually, if you look hard enough on the internet, Dorkiest Teeterbaum still walks among us today. your body moving and have a laugh <laughs> and feel really good about yourself well then please stand up walk in place and join us in some silly size now let's all shake our hips and find a seat my good friends Smiley Up Cheeks, Auto Be Jolly, and I were just getting ready to do some silly signs. So if you'd like to join us, then give yourself a hug and say, Hello there, boys and girls. My name is Dr. Cedric Berkholdt, and our friend Mr. Tiederbaum is correct. Smiling is very important because smiling relaxes the muscles in your face, and you get more oxygen into your brain, and your brain loves oxygen it's here to get your whole body moving when your body's moving your mind is grooving. that's how we make our circle of fun now feel the muscles in your tummy and your chest when these muscles are strong, they'll help you do your best. Now reach around and feel the muscles in your back. I love my body! Then give yourself a hug and say, I am wonderful. I am wonderful! Ding dong, ding dong. It's a wonderful feeling and they call it love. Let's spell the word love with our bodies. <laughs> oh! I have a feather duster. And I don't particularly like to dust. <coughs> and if I go home with this feather duster, my wife is going to make me dust. But what I'd really rather do is take her home some flowers. So let's do some magic. Turn this feather duster into flowers and fill this whole room up with love by doing some silly size love jumps. Just squat down. I love myself. And everybody else, 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 I love myself. And everybody else
As for this place, I think my work here is done.